Welcome to Fanatics Live, where we virtually connect you to your favorite athletes right at home. Tonight, we will be meeting with fans, signing autographs, and engaging in live Q&A. Now, let's welcome our host. What's up, everyone? My name is Jessica Blaylock, and I am so excited to be hosting my first ever edition of Fanatics Live. And as someone who has spent the last six years of my career covering Major League Baseball, I am even more pumped to be introducing you to tonight's special guest, Mr. Ozzie Smith. Now, just to give you a little bit of background on Ozzie and some of the accomplishments throughout the course of his career, listen to this list. He was a 15-time All-Star. He won an NL Gold Glove 13 consecutive years. He won a World Series with the Cardinals back in 1982. He won a Roberto Clemente Award. He's in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame, and his number was retired by the Cardinals back in 1996. So without further ado, let's welcome in the wizard himself, Mr. Ozzy Smith. Hi, Jess. Hey, Ozzy. How are you doing tonight? All right. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. We've got so many cool things coming up in this edition of Fanatics Live. I know you have been signing autographs. You're going to sign a few more. You're going to be taking some questions from fans who are so excited to talk to you. But before we get to any of that, I have a few questions of okay. my own. All, All right. right. Let's jump right in. My first question, over the past couple of years, We've really seen the game of baseball changed. Home runs are up, strikeouts are up. It seems like every team is employing the shift defensively. How have you seen baseball evolve and change from the time that you played to what it looks like now? Well, I, I think you hit on a couple things there. I, I think that people have really always enjoyed seeing the ball fly out of the ballpark. And we certainly have guys who are swinging up more and and stuff, and consequently, in baseball, uh, there's a saying: when you swing up, your average goes down. When you swing down, your average goes up. You know, so you see averages down a little bit because guys are trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. And um, you know, back in the day when we played, it it was all about um, the fundamentals and execution. You know, you you still have to do it when when teams are built from an offensive standpoint. You're probably going to be lacking from a defensive standpoint. So. You know, I, I think that the emphasis is more on offense today than it is on defense. But the teams that win are teams that, that put it all together. They're both good offensive teams and they play good defense as well. You know, so we always had teams that were always trying to be as well-rounded as we could possibly be, you know, playing on both ends of the both offense and defense. And um, today I, I, I just it's it, it's not uh, it's not that way. It's more offensive oriented. I think you nailed it. Absolutely. You want to see a complete team, teams that excel offensively, defensively, and then, of course, have great pitching as well. Well, I just went through a pretty extensive list of your accomplishments, and that really only scratches the surface. I mean, you had such a prolific career. Are there one or two accomplishments that you look back on that just mean the most to you? I, I would imagine the winning a World Series was pretty amazing. <laughs> certainly uh, winning the World Series in 1982, which was my first year here with the Cardinals. I think we all uh, would like to experience what it is to, to get in the postseason. And I was able to do that in my uh, first year here. And uh, lo and behold, we were able to win the World Series against a very good Milwaukee Brewer team. So uh, that accomplishment was 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 very special. Um, the other things that that really kind of stood out in my career. I hit a home run in 1985 and in the playoffs against the Dodgers, and that would probably be uh, a highlight. And then the third thing, of course, is making it to the Hall of Fame. Um, you know, when I started playing, I, that was never the goal. The goal was to be as well-rounded a player as I could be and be as consistent as I possibly could. And that was really um, – that was really my goal right from the start was be as consistent as I possibly could. And, and all of those other things would take care of themselves. And I was fortunate enough to, to make it to three world series, uh, only winning the one in 82, but um, that's what it was all about. And all each one was different. Um, you know, I had a chance to play on some wonderful all, all-star teams too, you know, and I got a chance to play against and with some of the guys that were uh, 
people that I admired from a distance uh, as a kid growing up, you know. So um, I've, I had a wonderful, uh, wonderful 19 years in, in the big leagues, and um, I couldn't be happier with the way that it turned out. I can only imagine what that celebration after winning a World Series was like, and I can only imagine what that phone call must have been like when you found out <laughs> that you were going into Cooperstown. That is awesome. Well, we're going to get to a couple of questions from fans, but first we want to give a shout out to Charlie Toronto. Each guest on tonight's show will be receiving an officially licensed Charlie Toronto hand-embellished gicle. Charlie is a resident artist at Fanatics, and he is known for his use of color, stroke, patterns, and original designs that bring a creative light to Team Pride. You can find an assortment of Charlie's items at Fanatics, or you can reach him at charlietoronto3.com for more information. Let's take a look at how he has brought the St. Louis Cardinals logo to life. That is absolutely incredible. And as someone who has absolutely no artistic <laughs> ability whatsoever, <laughs> I appreciate it. The two of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and me both. I appreciate it even more. Yeah. All right, uh, time to welcome in some of our fans and get the party started. We're going to kick things off with Brian. He is from Denver, Colorado. He lives by the motto, don't sweat the small stuff. And I got to imagine that that's something that every professional <laughs> athlete thinks to themselves too. His first baseball memory was actually going to a Twins game when he was only three years old and he asked his dad how long it took to mow the grass. I think that's a totally good question for a three-year-old to ask. I'm impressed by it. So let's go ahead and welcome in Brian. Hi, Ozzy. Great to talk hey, to you. Talk to you. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. How are you doing? All right. You guys got much snow up there? Uh, actually, we, it was nice until today, and we've gotten about three inches. So, ah, yeah. uh, okay. but uh, hopefully, it melts fast, and uh, we can start thinking about uh, spring training and and getting back, uh, getting the games going again. Yes, sir. Uh, well, hey, I, I I wanted to tell you one of uh, one of the uh, another early memory of mine was uh, a family vacation we took. It was actually. Uh, 1987, a year that that you ended up making it to the World Series, and uh, we oh, yeah. uh, and you guys ended up beating us too. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, wow. Well, go ahead. Was, yeah, but but uh, that was uh, the first time I got I got to see a game in St. Louis, and so uh, one of the highlights for for both my sister and I was when you came out on the field and did your trademark uh, back backflip, and mm -hmm. so uh, I guess to me. You know, you you're one of the most charismatic players, and one you know had a flashy style, and but but really focused on the fundamentals. But uh, just beyond you know the play of your career, and then and then afterwards, when when you hosted this week in baseball, mm -hmm. you know I, I kind of see you, at, and you seem to have been sort of an ambassador for the game. So I wondered if you could talk a little bit about if that's something that you kind of envisioned, or if that came to you from another player or what, what kind of fed that for you? Well, Brian, it was just, it, it was almost a, a, a natural transition really, you know, um, I, I've always enjoyed, um, enjoyed playing and performing in front of people. And I wanted people to appreciate it. Uh, whether I was playing uh, for your team or against your team, I wanted people to be able to say that, you know, uh, I appreciate what he brought, you know, what he brought to the game, the energy that I brought every day. And I tried to be as consistently as I possibly could. So, you know, uh, I think that for most fans, it's all about feeling a part or they want to feel a part of something special. And I was very fortunate to play in a place here in St. Louis that, you know, where the fan base is, is, is baseball crazy, you know? So it was all uh, in allowing them to feel a part of what it was that we were trying to accomplish out there on the field. And, um, uh, I just uh, I just took to it like uh, like a duck to water, and uh, it's just one of those natural things. I just 
try to be myself and allow people the the opportunity to enjoy uh, some of my God given talents. Sure. Well, I, I know they say it's if you're doing what you love, it it's uh, it's never work. And I, I get a I get the feeling that's probably what what baseball was for you. Yeah, I never worked a day in my life, you know, because I, I truly, uh, what I tried to do every day was ask myself, did I do the very best that I could today? And for 19 years, that answer was yes. And um, so I didn't leave the game feeling that uh, uh, that I cheated myself or I cheated the fans and the people that paid their money to come see me play. So um, it was it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it and I continue to enjoy it now because people uh, it's nice when people come up to you now and, and say, I remember when, or especially when people um, say say to you that, hey, you're the reason that I enjoy the game of baseball. And uh, that, that's a, a that's a feeling of accomplishment. That is awesome. That's great. I appreciate every, every one of those moments that you gave us, Ozzy. All right. Brian, I guess I get to, I get to sign something for you here. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Get clay. What's it called? It's called a it's clay. Very clay. fancy. Yeah. I had to look up how to properly pronounce that. Don't worry. Je clay. Je clay. All right. You, and you, you want your name on this, Brian? Oh, that would be great. It's it's Brian with an I. All right. Ozzy putting his signature on that je clay. And Brian, it looks like you already have an awesome memorabilia room set up so you get another cool piece to add to your collection. Uh, absolutely. And like, like Ozzy said, he's, he's one of the kind of heroes of, of my growing up time in, in baseball. So just getting to, getting to watch him play and, 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 and listen on the radio, especially and with the, with the great announcers they've had in St. Louis, uh, uh, kind of just put that picture in your mind of, all those great double plays and plays he's made over the years. Without a doubt. All right. Well, there, there you we go. go. Thank you so much for, for the questions and the conversation and stuff. And uh, you keep warm. Uh, all right. Will do. You too. <laughs> Take care. All right, Brian. Thanks. All right. Thanks so much, Brian. And Ozzy, I love that you mentioned playing in front of the fans in St. Louis. I've been to multiple baseball games in St. Louis, and that fan base absolutely lives up to its reputation. They are great, great yeah. fans. Our next question comes from Sue. She was actually born and raised and still lives in St. Louis. So, mm -hmm. yes. And her motto is treat others the way you want to be treated, the golden rule. You can never go wrong with that. And she would take toasted ravioli over gooey butter cake, which <laughs> apparently is a St. Louis thing. So let's yeah. welcome in Sue. Hey, Hi, Sue. How All right, how are you? I'm great. Uh, actually, we've had the pleasure of meeting. Um, I've actually worked at a couple of the uh, PGA Reach golf tournaments uh, oh, you know, wow. golf cool. and, uh, cool. actually gave me this as a gift so I'm just thrilled to that and it's good to see you again and it's just uh it's just thrilling for me well thank you Sue. thank you so much for for helping us out too we really appreciate it oh it's always fun and it's it's great to go out there and what you do for PJ reach is amazing and and what you do with that group but um I wanted to thank you as a fan it's just amazing uh, to have been in the ball park and watch you play and watch you perform. I mean, it's a, it's like a show, you know, <laughs> as Brian said earlier, you know, you're such a showman. And I guess one of my questions was actually, you had already answered it um, from Jessica, but I was wondering to, you know, as a fan and sitting there screaming at you, from the field or from the seats and you're on the field, how do you drown that out? How do you, do you even well, hear <laughs> No, you don't, you don't drown it all out. I mean, that's our goal is to try and drown it out. And that's, that's what we tell people we drown it out. But uh, you know, when you play in stadiums where, uh, where there are not a lot of people, you hear everything, you know, you hear the good stuff and you hear the bad stuff too, you know? So, uh, for us as players, I, I think it's important to not allow that, those type of things to to interfere with your concentration. You know, so we work real hard at at trying to be able to to stay focused on, on the field and 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 um, 
you know, when, when especially when somebody's riding you, you know, uh, the only way to stop a team or, or fans from riding you is to go out and make a great play or get a big hit, you know. So you just try and take that energy and and turn it into something positive. Well, it's uh, it's always been a pleasure, and I have to say, I had the pleasure of sitting down the first base uh, line in 1985 when you hit that oh. home run in Game Five. And yeah. <laughs> go crazy, folks. I mean, that's yeah. you. You know, it. Well, was, you know, you know, I I tell people that I feel like I've hit 500 home runs because. Um, you know, everywhere I go, you know, people still talk about it. I had the, the pleasure of having the great Jack Buck on the call. Smith, Corks yeah. one down the line, may go, may go, go crazy, folks, go crazy. The Cardinals have won the game by the score of three to two on a home run by the Wizard. Yeah. So, you know, when you're uh, when you're fortunate enough to 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 be a part of of a Cardinal that that created Cardinal lore right there and. Uh, Jack was Jack happened to be the one on the mic, and uh, he made me famous. Yeah, well, I don't think he made you famous, but uh, <laughs> I think you made you famous. But he he uh, he certainly made it more memorable for all of St. Louis. So thank you for for being such a good uh, representation of St. Louis. And I don't think there's a person in baseball that uh, doesn't know who you are or appreciate what you've done. So thank you very much. All right, Sue. Thank you so much for the call. Here, and I'm gonna, would you like your name on this? Yes, and it's Sue, it's S-U, there's no E. It's you, okay. Awesome, all right, so we're gonna get Sue, her autograph, and being a lifelong Cardinals fan, I know this one is going to be special for you, Sue. That is a cool piece of artwork, and that is going to have your name on it. That's awesome, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Good stuff. Good stories, too. That's so cool that you were at such a significant moment in Cardinals history, Sue. I don't think I talked for, I was able to talk for three days after screaming. <laughs> after well, and it's so true. I mean, athletes talk about it all the time, really feeding off of that crowd noise and that crowd hype. It definitely makes a difference. Sue, thank you so much for uh, your question. Thank you, Ozzy. All right. Bye-bye, Sue. All right, Ozzy, we've got one more fan who would love to ask you a question. This is another guy who has been a lifelong Cardinals fan. He was born in St. Louis, but now lives in St. Charles, Missouri, which is about 30 minutes outside of St. Louis. His life advice, play hard, know the game. And a fun fact, Virgil played alongside Lee Thomas while at Beaumont High School in the 1950s. So wow. let's, welcome, yeah, <laughs> let's welcome in Virgil. Virgil. Hey, hey, Virgil, how are you? It's fine, sir. Uh, was was Lee Thomas a good player? Pardon me? Was Lee Thomas a good player? Lee Thomas, yes. Okay. Yes, he was, good good he was very good, yes. He, he, told uh, he was a pretty good he player. He drafted in 1954. They didn't have drafts he signed. See, if you made more than $4,000, you had to go to big leagues. So mm -hmm. you had to go to minors. The Yankees signed him, and he had four or five years in the, in the minors and came up with the Yankees. Then they had the expansion, and he got drafted by the Los Angeles, uh, by the San Diego baseball team. Mm -hmm. With that, he became an all-star. He also batted, I don't know how many times, and this and that, his bio says a lot. He progressed from there, I think, up to Cardinal uh, offices. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was he a general was, manager. He was a general manager here for a long time. Yes, he was. He was with the Phillies when they won the World Series. Mm -hmm. And my question for you, though, about the game is you were a great Cardinal shortstop. Mm -hmm. He says, who helped you become a better hitter? Well, Virgil, you know, it, it really started with, um, you know, when I, when, when I came to the big leagues, the, the one thing that I wanted to do was be as, uh, as well-rounded as I possibly could. And I, I figured that if I had the right training and stuff, um, that there was no reason with my hand and eye coordination that I couldn't become a better hitter. So it really just boiled down to how hard I was willing to work. And when I came over here, got traded over here in, on uh, the winter of 1981, um, when Whitey Herzog came out to San Diego and uh, he traded Gary Templeton for me, 
uh, he gave me a guy by the name of Chuck Hiller, who started working with me and giving me a better understanding of what it was that I was trying to accomplish. Now, one of the things that happened with Whitey and myself was that we had a bet. For every ground ball that I hit, I won a dollar. And for every fly ball I hit, he I had to give him a dollar. So midway the season, uh, I had won so much money from him, he called the bet off. And so it was that understanding of, of understanding. I had to hit down on the ball to keep the ball out of the air to be able to utilize and take advantage of my, um, my speed. And so uh, when, when I started working with Chuck, you know, that was the thing that we worked on. We used the T a a lot. I spent a lot of time in the batting cages. And actually, I had a batting cage put in my basement at my home. And uh, I just worked on on keeping the ball out of the air, learning to hit line drives and, um, you know, just put the time in. Um, had a lot of calluses, a lot of blisters. <laughs> but, uh, it was all about putting the time and, and effort into it. And I, I did that and, and, and things worked out. And it started with a better understanding of what it was I was trying to accomplish. Okay. One other question I have. Mm -hmm. this, with the way the game is today, you think the Cardinals have enough big bats to be a good team this year? Well, you know, with the game, uh, with the way that the game has changed, you certainly need big bats today, you know, because they're, they're, all the teams are trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. And, you know, you can always use that that big bat. But I think that over the long haul, Virgil, if you're, if you're going to win, you've got to be able to play defense too. And um, you've got to be able to generate offense without necessarily hitting the ball out of the ballpark. And I think that's one of the things that the Cardinals has always been very consistent at, at the, the fundamentals, you know, being able to get that guy on, get him over and get him in. And I think one of the most efficient things that, that you can do as a player is be able to get the guy in from third base with less than two downs. So that'd be one of the things that I would concentrate on if, uh, if I were a manager or a coach. Um, I would look at the, the degree of consistency with which guys were able to get that guy in from third base with less than two downs. Great questions from you, Virgil. Now we're going to get you your autograph because I know you're going to be excited to mm -hmm. take that piece of memorabilia home as well. There's the Jacle. Ozzy's going to put his signature on it. For now, one of my favorite Cardinals fans, Virgil, you have become one of my new favorite Cardinals fans. I'm sure you have so many great stories that you could tell us from over the years. And now after asking your question tonight, you're going to be able to go home with a super cool piece of memorabilia. They start watching the Cardinals back in the 40s. Wow. Also able to see Babe Ruth. They came around right before he died. And we were out in a knot who came for little kids. And he gave us a good speech. So that's one of my big memories. I've seen all the great ball players down there. That is awesome. All right. Virgil, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, Virgil. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you. Have a good one, Virgil. Thanks to all of our fans who have asked their questions so far. And Ozzy, now we've got some questions for you that fans have been able to submit through social media, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Instagram. And the first one that we've got is from Brian from Lafayette. Brian, take it away. Hi, Brian LaHockey here from Lafayette, Louisiana. And my question for you, Mr. Wizard of Oz, how did you come up with doing that flip that you did during key games throughout your career? As a kid, I always thought that was the coolest thing ever. Thanks for answering, and always remember, as Mr. Buck would say, that's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it actually started. I grew up in uh, Southern California, and I lived across the street from a wood factory. So uh, they had pallets, and then they had a lot of sawdust. So I learned to tumble in the sawdust. And uh, so I, I knew how to flip when I got to the big leagues and uh, try and make it a long story short here. Uh, after practice, we had to run two miles and I wasn't big into running long distances. I, I was a sprinter. And so uh, being the young guy on the team, I had teammates, Gene Tennis, Raleigh Fingers, Gaylord Perry, Dave Winfield, all gave me a hard time about being the young guy and being at the back of the park. <laughs> So to show them I wasn't tired, I did a round off my round off back flip, and I had I could really I could really leap back then. But uh, I, I showed them that I could do it, that I wasn't tired. And Gene Tennis had some girls that were in the gymnastics, and uh, 
he uh, he wanted me to show them that I could do that at some point in time during the season, which we weren't able to do. And then the final day of the season, which was Fan Appreciation Day, he and the PR guy thought it would be a good idea for me to do it going out to my position. I reluctantly did it. People liked it so much. <laughs> they asked me to do it opening day the following year, and lo and behold, a trademark was born. That's awesome. It became a tradition. Ozzy Smith, the man of many talents. Yeah. All right. Our next question comes from Ron. Ron, let's hear it. What have you got? Hey, Ozzy. Ron Rosenbaum, Newport Beach, California. One question I have for you, always wondered. A great base stealer like yourself, did you ever fear any one particular catcher or any catcher's arms when you got the steal sign from the third base coach? Have a good day. Thanks for the memories. No, I, I, there wasn't uh, many guys. I think that if you're going to be a successful base dealer, you, you can't be intimidated. But there were guys that uh, that it was tough to run off of, especially if the pitcher was good at holding guys on. But it, it, there were a couple of guys that had great arms that um, they could throw from their knees. And one that comes to mind right away is Benito Santiago, who played with San Diego. And then the other was Tony Pena, who played with the Pittsburgh Pirates, who eventually came over and played with us, too. So those two guys were – were uh, very good at, uh, they had very good percentages at throwing guys out because they didn't have to come from their knees. They could throw from their knees and uh, that made it a little bit tougher. Great question and great answer. All right, our last question from social media comes from at Eddie Murray Jr. 33 on Instagram. And he wants to know who was your greatest inspiration in life, not just in baseball, but in life, who inspired you? Well, I, I, my, I would have to say that my, my mom, you know, uh, when I was young, uh, the thing that she instilled in me was that no matter what it was that I chose to do in my life, I wanted, she wanted me to work hard to be the very best that I could be. And, um, you know, I took that with me everywhere I went. And uh, being a small guy, you know, you were always going to be told that you were too small, that you wouldn't be able to do this, you wouldn't be able to do that. And she always told me that I could do whatever I put my mind to as long as I uh, gave my my all each and every day, and that's uh, that's what I took with me uh, throughout my life, and it paid off in the long run. Nothing like the love of a mama. Well, we've got a little bit more coming up, but first, let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. Sports fans are gearing up at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and players you love. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Today's show is brought to you by Fanatics, your one-stop shop for officially licensed fan gear. Shop today by league, team, or player at Fanatics.com. All right, we're going to put a wrap on this with what I like to call our rapid fire round. So I'm going to give you a question, and Ozzy, you just say the first thing that comes to your mind. You ready? All ready. All right, let's do it. A rapid fire round. We're going to kick it off with this one. Universal DH or let the pitchers hit? Let the pitchers hit. <laughs> I love it. Favorite character from The Wizard of Oz? Um, the Wizard. The Simpsons or Family Feud? You made an appearance on both. The Simpsons. How old were you the last time that you nailed a backflip? 41. <laughs> nice. What's your go-to <laughs> karaoke song? Uh, Cupid. <laughs> All right. Draw back your bow and let your arrow go straight <laughs> to my lover's heart for me. Yep. Is that Sam that's Cook. not Otis Redding, is it? No, Sam Cook. Okay, Sam Cook. Sam Cook. Where can you find the best pizza in St. Louis? And just a heads up, Jason Tatum said it was Emos. Is he right? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> It's doing, which is close to where I live. Favorite TV show to binge watch? Uh, favorite TV show right now. Um, I like. Well, I I I'm binge, I binge the All American, which is uh, which is out right now, and I'm also watching Your Honor, which is a good good show. Okay, I'll have to check that out. When it comes to a uniform, all white or the powder blue? All white. If you had a walk-up song during your playing days, what would it be? 
We're off to see the wizard. The wonderful <laughs> wizard. Hey, and since you mentioned Sam Cook, I'm going to throw this curveball at you, pun intended. If you had to choose, Al Green or Otis Redding? Uh, Otis Redding. He's sitting on the dock of the bay. I love it. Otis is fantastic. So is Al Green too. That was a tough one. I'll, yeah. I'll give you credit. That was a tough one to have to make you choose between. Well, Ozzy, thank you so much for the time. This has been an absolute honor. I hope you enjoyed all the questions from the fans. They came up with some really good ones. And thank you for signing the autographs. This has been awesome. You're very welcome. Thank you guys so much. And uh, Fanatics is fanatical. <laughs> I love it. All right. Thanks yeah, so right. much. All Take right. care, Ozzy. Thank you. Bye-bye, Jess. Bye. And I just want to thank all of you out there for joining us for this edition of Fanatics Live, tuning in to watch Ozzy Smith. Take your questions, have a meet and greet with fans, and sign all of those very cool jacles by Charlie Toronto. Before we say goodbye, I want to remind all of you guys that the next Fanatics Live is coming up this Thursday, January 28th. That's going to be with Joe Burrow, the quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. And then I will be back with you on February 2nd for a meet and greet with the comeback kid himself, Joe Montana. To watch any previous shows that have aired and to learn more about how to get involved with Fanatics Live, go to fanatics.com slash live. As always, stay safe. I want to give a shout out to Fanatics for giving me this opportunity to hang out with you guys tonight and to also talk with Ozzy Smith. This has been so much fun. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe and good night.